Hi students, welcome back to another chemistry lesson. Today we are going to start with a new topic which is on the chapter on metals. So for this chapter on metals, uh, you should have seen uh, a lot of things regarding this chapter um, way back when you were in primary school. Uh, then when you were in lower sex science, you should have seen some of them as well. Um, and then more recently when we did our lesson on periodic table, we have also looked at uh, the group 1 alkaline metals in great detail. So for this chapter on metals, you will realize that uh, you do already, already know quite a bit of stuff, uh, just that now we are going to add on uh, more layers of understanding to it, uh, so that you can further appreciate some of the um, properties of metals that you have uh, been seeing thus far and understand it in a more micro kind of perspective. Okay, so the first part of this lesson, we're going to look at metals and alloys. So first and foremost, let us do some uh, recap on the physical properties of metals. Um, so number one, they are good conductors of heat and electricity. This one we are very familiar with. So for instance, a very uh, common example of a metal that we, we see in daily life would be, let's say, copper. Copper is uh, used in our wires um, and found in a lot of electrical appliances. So obviously they have to be good conductors of heat and electricity, otherwise uh, they cannot be used for that purpose, right? Number two, they, are, they usually have high densities, so they, they weigh quite a bit, they can feel very heavy and dense. Um, and they also have very high melting and boiling points. Right, so you need to give, give it a lot of energy in order to, to melt it, uh, much less to say boil it, right? Um, but the keyword here is usually, so you should also know uh, some common examples such as let's say aluminium. Uh, aluminium, it has a low density, so this is just um, generally, uh, there are some exceptions which we will see along the way. Number three, metals and alloys, they are malleable as well as ductile. Okay, so you must be wondering what does the word malleable as well as ductile mean, right? And then what are their differences? So if you just look with me at this diagram over here, uh, this should be able to help you uh, differentiate uh, the two. All right, so malleability really is about uh, the fact that metals, uh, they have this property of being malleable, meaning once you hammer it, uh, it does not break apart. Uh, in fact, it will just become uh, a thinner sheet. Okay, so for instance, uh, some of the applications that we see in real life will be, let's say, gold, right? Uh, you know those people who have too much money to spare, uh, they will probably eat things like uh, ice cream, right? Eat normal ice cream, but then they will pay uh, a whole lot of money to, to add a gold sheet onto it so that it looks very fancy. Okay, so uh, to make all this gold paper and whatever not for all these people to enjoy, uh, it, it, it uses it makes use of the property of metals being malleable uh, in order to do that. Okay, then as for ductility, if you say that a metal is ductile, uh, the best example to remember will be copper. Copper, right? Copper is used in wires, so we say that copper is very ductile because it can be drawn into wires, uh, thin wires even, uh, again without breaking. Let's move on to talk about our next part on pure metals. So pure metals, they are actually really soft. And if you can remember our lesson on the alkaline metals, group 1 elements, right? Your lithium, sodium, potassium, and so on. We saw a video where um, we can just use a scalpel to, to cut them pretty easily. Okay, so because they are very soft. Um, so why is this so? Let's look at it uh, at the micro level. Okay, so if we zoom in, zoom all the way in into the metal to have a look at it, right, at its structure, if we just look at the screen over here, uh, you'll realize that in a pure metal, the metal atoms, they are packed regularly in layers, so something like this, okay, because they are all same size, right? Uh, we learn in atomic structure that the same metal, or rather the same element, will have the same, uh, the atom will be of the same size. 
Okay, so in a pure metal, you see that the atoms, they are packed regularly in layers. And what happens is that if you just give it a little push, right, a little force to push the layers of atoms, you will realize that they will uh, slide over one another uh, very easily. Okay, so this is what happens at the atomic level. And then uh, what we observe, okay, in terms of observation in real life with our eyes, it will be that they are soft and can be packed easily. Okay, so in terms of reactivity, pure metals, they react readily with air, so oxygen in the air, as well as other things in the air, uh, as well as water, thus they corrode very easily. Okay, so meaning to say, again, pure metals, if they are freshly cut, you will realize that they are very shiny, but they will very readily become grey in colour because that would uh, mean that it has been corroded. Let's continue with the next part on alloys. So we mentioned that pure metals are very soft. So the question that you should be asking would be, so then, so why is it that the metals that we see in daily life, uh, they are all very hard? Okay, so um, in more specific terms, actually, the metals that you see in daily life, those are a specific type, which we call them alloys. So alloys, the definition is over here. Okay, this part is important. Uh, an alloy is a mixture of a metal with one or a few other elements. Okay, so, uh, so yes, primarily it is made out of a metal, but uh, it is a mixture that has, um, it could be another uh, type of element, or it could also be uh, a non-metal, okay? We will look at some examples later on. Let me show you this uh, little diagram over here first. Okay, so if you just look at this small little window. Um, so earlier on, we said that pure metals, they are very soft because the atoms are packed regularly in layers. And if you just give a little push, a little force, uh, the layers will slide over one another very easily, right? Because your uh, atoms are all same size. But in an alloy, you will notice that, um, for instance, let's say if we look at some of the first example here, the most common example of alloy that we see in daily life would be steel. Okay, steel is an alloy of primarily iron and then a bit of uh, carbon. Okay, so um, in this diagram, the blue color spheres, the atoms, will represent iron and then the smaller ones, uh, or rather the, the red color ones, will represent carbon carbon atoms, okay? So by introducing uh, a few of these carbon atoms into uh, your pure metal, pure iron, all right, you realize that now when you want to push uh, the layers of atoms, uh, it is a lot harder, okay? Your layers of atoms no, are no, long, no longer able to slide past uh, each other easily, okay? So... That is what we observe at the micro level. And then what we observe using our naked eye will be that uh, your alloys are very, very hard. It's very hard uh, to, to change its shape even if you put a force, uh, apply a force onto it. Okay, so uh, back to the notes. Why are metals often used in the form of alloys? So for instance, like those of you who are in symphonic band, the instruments that you play, are made of brass, right? Brass is an alloy of copper and zinc, okay? Uh, so some reasons will be, number one, to make metals harder and stronger, okay? Uh, secondly, to improve the appearance of metals. So by adding some other element, uh, you might be able to change the color rather than just having the pretty boring gray color on the metal. Then number three, to lower the melting point of metals. This is uh, more for soldering. Okay, so uh, 3E3, you study design and technology, right? So the soldering, uh, solder that you use in the D&T lab to do your coursework or whatever that you're doing. Okay, this is uh, basically the chemistry behind it, right? So because the melting point of solder is... Uh, pretty low, that's why you're able to, to use it to join different metallic components or uh, different parts together. Number four will be to make metals more resistant to corro uh, corrosion. Alright, so this part we will 
talk about it a little more at the back. We turn to the next page of your notes. Um, here is basically a summary of what I've mentioned just now. Why are alloys stronger as well as harder than their constituent metals? Um, so that's because um, the atoms of the added element have a different size. So for instance, if we look on the right over here, this example, um, let's say if we talk about the example of solder, right? So the alloy solder is made up of uh, primarily tin metal, okay, atoms of tin metal, and uh, with the addition of a few atoms of lead. Okay, so if you look at the periodic table, uh, lead is just under tin, right? Under group group 4, okay, group 4, so you will expect that the lead atoms are slightly bigger than tin, so this is what you see in this diagram here, alright, so you can see that uh, just a few lead atoms, the addition of a few lead atoms into this whole alloy mixture is sufficient to uh, cause the disruption of the regular packing of the layers, okay, of tin atom, alright, so back to this, so uh, in this case, your solder alloy is much harder and stronger than the constituent pure metals, which is tin as well as lead alone, because the atoms of the added element have a different size, thereby uh, causing your orderly arrangement of atoms to be disrupted. As such, your atoms cannot slide past uh, one another each easily when a force is applied. Okay, so yes, that is the understanding uh, at the micro level. So this part, there's another word here, I cannot slide past. Okay, I forgot to write in, so you just write in on your own. Um, yes, so this is uh, the end of part one of our lesson on metals. In the next lesson, we will look at part two, which is the reactivity series. We will um, have a look at how the different metals have different reactivity uh, and investigate why. Okay, that's it. See you in the next lesson. Goodbye.